Hey there, baseball fans. It's Ben here, and today I have a beautiful box of 1991 Donruss Series 1 baseball cards. These are the blue ones for you, those of you keeping track at home. So I'm going to rip open a handful of these packs. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just do eight or so. In 1991, 92 was kind of like the last year that you really saw wax packs, period, because... After that, they all went to either cello packs or kind of the plastic or the foil, but wax was really not a thing because it damaged the cards and hurt their value. Um, so, as the namesake of this YouTube channel, I feel I owe these wax packs my allegiance. So we're gonna look through these 1991. Oh, the Barry Bonds Diamond King right out of the right of the out of the gate here, like his like father like son. I never got tired of that storyline, that's for sure. With Griffey, too. Uh, and there's a Carlson Fisk highlight. So, there is definitely absolutely no value in any of these cards. But they're still fun in a very, very early 90s design on these. Um, no doubt about that. And the this is Series 1, which is the blue one. And then Series 2 from Donruss. This is the first year they did multiple series. They, um... They were green. So I always go back and forth about whether I like the green or the blue better. Uh, I think right now I'm liking the green just because I'm seeing a lot of blue. There's a Cal Ripken. I think this is the last year before they abandoned this kind of design on the back to all of the Don Ross years. They had a very similar design and then 92 they stepped it up. All those premium cards hitting the market. Upper Deck changed the game in 89, and all the card companies scrambled to catch up. Some of them taking as long as the 1992 and 1993 to actually start to make some good-looking cards. These all have the puzzle, or the game pieces in there, too. So if I win, I'll make sure to uh, travel back in time and claim my prize. Couple Julio Franco's already. And these uh, puzzle pieces here are the Willie Stargell set. There's Paul Molitor. Well, we know had a lot of alcohol problems throughout his career. There's Barry Larkin, Diamond King. Jim Abbott. You know, so you look at these players as they're playing and you look on their cards, but uh, you know, these are just real men behind uh, these pictures with real struggles and lives and choices, good and bad. Ricky Henderson, all star. What a great player he was, huh? You know, what happened to Dave Raggetti? You know, it's a good player. Double Diamond King there. You can see at the bottom, he's got the, the little Diamond King badge showing 84 and 91. And we'll look up, look him up, see what happened to Dave Raggetti. There's Juan Gonzalez, second year card for him. These packs sure are easy to open, especially after struggling with cello packs, packs for a little while. I just really enjoy it. There's an Edgar Martinez. Diamond King. I love these Diamond King cards. Mark McGuire, All-Star. This is a pretty good session here. With what we're finding. There's Larry Walker. You can just pull out some of my favorite players here. I'd be happy. Yeah, that's a pretty good session. Off. Hard to complain about seeing these, about seeing these good stars in here. Another Edgar Martinez Diamond King to put in there. Another Mark McGuire. That looks like we're repeating ourselves here. Pedro Guerrero. Yep. Larry Walker again. So not entirely random here on this one, Don Russ. Diamond 
Stephen King checklist, everybody's favorite. There's Greg Maddox. Nothing worse as a kid when you, you know, get 15 cards in the pack and you're like, oh, one of them is a checklist. All right. So there you go. Handful of stars. Let's just do a quick recap here. Greg Maddox, Larry Walker, Mark McGuire, Edgar Martinez, Larry Walker, Mark McGuire, Edgar Martinez, Juan Gonzalez, Ricky Henderson, Barry Larkin, Paul Molitor, Kyle Ripken, Carlson Fisk, and Barry Bonds. Plenty of Diamond Kings in here, which is always fun to see. But Dave Raggetti. I wonder what happened to that guy. Well, we are going to find out. Wikipedia will tell us. There he is. Uh, playing the majors from 79 to 95. It's a nice long career. And pitching coach for the Giants for 17 years. Wow, 2000 to 2017. Nickname is Rags. Good for you, Dave. Record of 82 and 79. 346 ERA, 1,100 strikeouts, and 252 saves. Mostly with the Yankees. A little time with the Giants. And then finishing out Reds, uh, A's, Blue Jays, White Sox. Two-time All-Star, three-time World Series champ, AL Rookie of the Year in 81, Relief Man, two times, Saves Leader, and Pitched a No-Hitter. I mean, that is a solid career. You can't complain too much about that. Let's just check out kind of how his career ended at the end here. I always find that interesting. What drove them to leave the game? Released by the Blue Jays in the spring 95, signed as a free agent with the White Sox. And then he again granted free agency, but no team signed him. And he retired to end his 16-year career. So kind of goes out with a whimper a little bit. But goes on to be a coach for many years. So good for him. 18 seasons working under different managers. And then moved into a front office role with the Giants. Good for you, Dave. And his wife, he and his wife have triplets. Oh, his sister-in-law serves as a surrogate mother. There is a story there, I'm sure. Um, but Dave, good for you for, first of all, having a great major league career. Reaching the World Series and winning a couple of times. All-star. Rookie of the Year, I mean, all those accolades, and then continuing on as a pitching coach and the front office guy. I mean, it's hard to complain about that. That is a solid career in any profession, and uh, good for you for doing that. So hats off to you, Dave, and the rest of you. We'll see you next time.